كما يستحقه حمدا كثيرا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله اللهم العن أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابع له على ذلك اللهم العن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعت وبايعت وتابعت على قتله اللهم العنهم جميعا ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله أجمعين محمد اللهم صلى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين Islam is a proactive religion that doesn't only address problems once they've transpired and once they've come to pass in Islam we deal with them before they happen and we take preventative measures and this is why we have taqwa and we talk about taqwa over and over and over again because guarding from evil is more essential than doing good and this is why we attend these congregations we don't generally come to these places once things have gone wrong. And sometimes you see people, they make a mistake, then they come to their Lord. Others, they take the proactive measure, the preventative measure. They turn up to the Masjid. They turn up to the Husseiniyat. They turn up to the Islamic establishments before the problem takes over. And they don't turn up to hear something new. They don't turn up to hear someone get up and say, for example, in order for God to forgive you, mix some turmeric in milk and gargle it and then spit it out on the pavement or something like that. They don't come to hear something like this. They come to hear the same thing over and over and over again. In fact, this is what it's all about. Allah Azza wa Jal said to his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Remind Who? Remind the people For you are only a reminder You are there to remind them You are there to bring this about the problem is in the world today, there are not many reminders. The only reminders you receive in this world are remind you about life, living life to the fullest, taking advantage of your day. You know, you know when you, for example, you hear people with the saying, seize the day to make the most of the day for this world. You know, when someone dies, they say, this person enjoyed living life. It's all about life. Everything's about life. And what's important is always hidden from you. The prophets were here to remind us. Remind us because we already knew. They reminded us because the reminder benefited us. فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَ that when you remind, the reminder is beneficial. The first thing in attaining a good and happy life is to be in constant reminder. Not to be someone that forgets. And this is one of the biggest problems with alcohol, for example. People drink, why? They drink away their sorrows. They drink away their woes. They don't want to have a contact with reality. Have you ever noticed when someone becomes an alcoholic and when someone drinks regularly, because they don't want to know about it. When they finish work, what do they call What's you know, generally? Hasant, beer o'clock. That's what they call it. The, the hour you finish work is called beer o'clock. That's the moment 
See, someone's switched on. Someone works with a fair few bogans. That when you finish work, it's called beer o'clock. This is when you finish. They're off. You know, they even calculate this. You know, it's at what time do you finish work? You know, be talking to you. What time do you finish work, Medi? And you turn around and you say, um, seven o'clock. He goes, I'll be in my third long neck by then. This is what they'll tell you because their whole study, their whole understanding is associated with alcohol because alcohol erases reality. It removes reality and it makes them have a life and they wake up the next day, they feel terrible. They get rid of that terrible feeling by drinking again. And this is what they do. This is the purpose of a reminder. It gives you a touch with reality and it brings back that good feeling. Sometimes someone may call you and all they want to hear is a few good words from you to make you feel better again. To make, sorry, them feel better again. Allah Azza wa Jal says to his messenger, in this point, in the verse as well, he says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ that remind because the reminder is of benefit to the believer. And this is why it's so important to enjoin good and to prohibit evil. Why is it so important to do Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi al Munkar? It is so important. It even has its own subject in the Islamic laws. If you open Risal al Amali, if you read through it, the Islamic laws, you will see there's a bab for Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi al Munkar. And the rules for it, in fact, at the beginning of it, if you look at, for example, the Risali of Sayyid Ali Sistani, if you look in, in the actual Risali at the beginning of Bab al Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi al Munkar, it begins by saying what? The Amir al Mu'mineen, a narration, an Amir al Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamu alayh, he says, Kana Rasulullah. That Rasulullah used to command us to meet the people of sin. We were Johim Mikfahirra. That when we meet them, to not give them a happy face. Give them that stance or that 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 look of, you know, dryness, you know. Make them feel that what you're doing is wrong. Don't sit there with, you know, someone sitting there talking to you and they're doing something haram and you're so normal with it. You laugh in their face as if this is absolute normal, absolutely normal. When they're doing something that is scorned in the community, something that is forbidden by Allah, let them know about this. Don't let them feel this is okay. Don't let them feel that this is normal. Approach them in this manner because this is what alerts people. And this is what is associated with dealing with society and having a happy society. What well, Az-Zahra sallallahu wa sallam alayha says about when she, she mentions in Al-Khutbah Al-Fadakiyah why every action was given. When she mentions Amr bil Ma'roof, Annahi al Munkar, she says, Maslahatun lil Am. This is what benefits society. This is of benefit for society. How you build society, how you fix society, construction of society is done through this. But I mentioned the verse. In the verse that I said, فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَةِ الذِّكْرَى In Surah what? Surah Al-A'la. فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَةِ الذِّكْرَى What does it say? Does the dhikr affect everyone? When you remind, does it affect everyone? No. Say, يَذَّكَّرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى Who will remind? Who will remember? That's why also with Amr al-Ma'ruf and Ahl munkar I don't have to chase people that it won't affect. You know, there's people... Did you know, just when they talk, you know, this person's, he's on another planet. I can't even talk to him. You know, he just came from Mars, dropped off for now, he's going to go back. He's back in orbit before you know. Someone that you don't need to bother with. Say, Someone that fears that when you mention the day of judgment, he's afraid this is someone that will get affected by a reminder. A wretched person, a wicked person. We'll avoid the reminder. They're not interested in this reminder. But you people that are present here, together we are here to remind ourselves. Remind ourselves about the real value and what this world's about to restore this happiness. 
within ourselves. With what do we remind ourselves? Do you remind or what do you remind yourself? You need to remind yourselves with what the reality is. If you look at every part of knowledge that you acquire and everything you learn, nothing will have an effect on your life. Nothing. And I'm not using any hyperbole here. Nothing will affect your life like the Quran. Nothing in your life. You will read everything you want to read. Nothing will have an effect or a bearing on your life like the Holy Quran. In fact, Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah um, Surah Qaf to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He says to him, فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيد فَذَكِّرْ Remind them with what? بِالْقُرْآنِ Use the Qur'an to remind them. Remind who? مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيد The one that fears my threat. Fears Allah Azza wa Jal's threat. What's going to happen on the Day of Judgment? The reality, the one that fears this, this is the one you remind with the Quran. That this book, without a doubt, is a guide for those that guard against evil. The muttaqeen, this is who gets affected when they are reminded, reminded about this. You need to remind people of what? People are feeling down. What makes you feel down? You know, you're not in a world where nothing affects you. I said to one of my friends I was talking to, he told me I'm feeling down. And I said to him, listen, I said, I'm going to tell you something and put this in your head. That we live in a world that if everything was to flow as we wanted it to flow, there are certain people on this planet that would not be eating. They'd be dead. They'd die from starvation. One of the points I used was, you know, everywhere you go, you see these yellow advertisements. You open YouTube, yellow Australian United Party, or whatever it's called, United Party. I haven't even got it right. I've seen it that often. But you look at someone like Clive Palmer, who is a senator and a billionaire. But probably is as coherent and intellectual as an inanimate object. Honestly, the fact that this guy is a center, a senator, and the fact that this guy is a billionaire is a sign of God. That Allah Azza wa Jal allows these things to take place in order to show us that you're not in control of this world. I am in control of this world. I give... Mulk to whoever I want. I give sovereignty to whoever I want. I take sovereignty from whoever I want. I give might to whoever I want. I take might from whoever I want. This is the world and the way it is. I need to understand this. I need this perspective. And from the very beginning, Allah warns us. When Allah Azza wa Jal created Adam, alayhi salam, He gave him a stern warning. He said, this is your enemy. You have an apparent enemy. Your enemy is the shaitan. Your enemy is Iblis. And not only that, it's not like Iblis is an enemy that's hidden. It's not an enemy that's out of your memory. It's, In fact, you can actually talk about the shaitan and there's no lobby group that's going to get up and say, listen... We take offense to this. You're not going to lose your rugby union contract if you talk about Iblis. You can feel free to talk about him. Why? Allah Azza wa Jal, when he mentions Iblis, he says, إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ That Iblis is certainly a manifest enemy. He's apparent. Why? In fact, Iblis also verifies this. When he says to Allah, La Not only, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't mean anybody any good. I'm trouble. And when I come along, I'm trouble. Every thought that you get from me is trouble. Imagine your head like a pond that's in your head. Imagine a pond that's still and stones are falling into this pond. Good thoughts and bad thoughts. And it's 
apparent there. It's always has been there. It's not something that we can deny. With us, within us, there's inherent, inherently there is something within us, without a doubt. And the proof of this is we suddenly acquire thoughts. We sit there and we're not thinking of anything. And suddenly there's a process of cogitation. We're sitting there, we start thinking. We start having thoughts, we start having ideas. And there's no, look, there's no evidence or scientific study, science, scientific study that says where this comes from. You're sitting there and you start getting thoughts. You get good thoughts and you get bad thoughts. Where they come from, there's no study to tell you where they come from. In fact, they even depict this in cartoons. You know, they show a cartoon character, then a devil tells him to do something and an angel tries to stop him. That effect is there. And there's nothing that we can understand from this except what we are told by Allah Azza wa Jal. And we know our soul, we look at it, our soul should be void of such ideas. So where do these ideas come from? Where do these ideas come from? Where do I get ideas to do things? You're sitting down, you just get an idea to do something. And this thing is out there. Where the hell did I come up with this idea? Where does this idea come from? You know, sometimes people say, oh, it's from video games or if it's from movies. No, no, they have an effect. But before they even existed, and you have evidence of this. Why did Qabil kill Habil? Qabil wasn't watching... Texas Chainsaw Massacre and then decided I'm going to kill someone. He wasn't playing Grand Theft Auto and he said I'm going to kill someone. Qabil wanted to kill Habil. What generated this thought in his head right from the beginning? Allah Azza wa Jal mentions this in the Quran. He says, He is talking about those that guard from evil. إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ that those that guard against evil, if suddenly they have a visit from this unwelcome visitor, from the shaitan, the shaitan comes in. That's why we are told with everything. You know, when you read the Quran, وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ when you recite Quran, ask Allah protection or seek refuge from Allah from the accursed shaitan. When you start to pray, when you say takbiratul ihram, before I begin reciting, I say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Everything I need to do, A'udhu billahi. This is why I even when you are to get intimate, you should remember the name of your Lord and sta'ad billah. So even with this, the shaitan does not associate with you. As much as you can, disassociate yourself from the shaitan. Because the shaitan, I don't know if you've heard the proverb. Usually a lot of proverbs have religious origins. There's a proverb that says the idle mind is the devil's workshop. You know when you're sitting there and you have no thought, that's why it's always good to be in dhikr. That's why it's always good to... It's, it's sometimes when you have a subha in your hand. Or sometimes if you have one of those counters, inadvertently you'll be doing tasbih. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad sallu ala Muhammad wa ali. So I'm always in remembrance, but if I'm at this point where I have a visit from the shaitan, the shaitan speaks for me, to me. If I'm someone that guards from evil, and the shaitan, I remember, I turn back, I reflect as to what this life is and what I'm supposed to do, and then Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ then they see. They know what's going on. Whereas other people won't. They say, you know, this is a good idea. Let's go steal a car. Or let's go do something of the like. It all comes up with an idea because there is no reminder there to prevent them. 
And this prevention is being mindful. I need to be mindful of Allah Azza At all times, I need to listen to some sermon. I need to be around people that remind me of Allah. You know when you're sitting with a group of people, anytime you're sitting down, you know if they say if you lie down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Don't think that you're going to hang out with bad people and it's not going to affect you. When you sit with someone and you look at, next time you're sitting with a friend of yours, look at their face. If he reminds you of the day of judgment, then associate with this person. But you know that friend that you sit with and you feel like I could sit naked while I'm sitting with this person? Honestly, you got one of those people that you go, I could do anything in front of this person. You know, and I could not outrank him in shamelessness. This guy's on a whole new level. These are people you don't want to associate with. Because this person's never going to point any of your errors out. He's going to say, here, hold my beer, and he's going to outdo you. You know, this is exactly what's going to happen. So these are people that you can't associate with. I need to associate with people that when I look at, they remind me of Allah. They make me wary that Allah Azza wa Jal is there. Also for my life, when I'm with these people that remind me of God, I feel good. I realize what I'm here for. I realize my task at hand. I realize what my life is about. What trial Allah has put before me. The devil tries to shroud your thoughts. He tries to shroud your soul. And when you're mindful, you remove this covering. And you see. See, from the very beginning, if you've taken precaution, you won't fall. And a lot of people fall with the act, for example, of khilwa. When a man and a woman, the anon mahram, sit together in a place where no one can see them. And they think that they're safe. Why? Because the person, I remember one person said, he said, I have enough faith that I could sit with a woman. She can remove her hijab and I will not get affected. And I said, you've got more faith than Yusuf alayhi salam. I said, because Yusuf, for seven years, was a servant with Zulaikha. Seven years. And he did not even look up at her once. He would look at the ground all the time for seven years. Imagine he was serving a woman. You, know, you, you need to understand the position. He could probably smell her scent when she walked past. If she had bangles, you could hear those bangles clanging onto each other. If she would walk, he would hear her stilettos or whatever. They'd be walking clickety-clacking on the ground. And he would look down. <laughs> Now, what I'm trying to say is, all this would have been taking place and Yusuf would look at the ground so as not to get affected. He'd put himself in this position so then when she would say, hey, talak, she would call him to her and she would attempt to make him turn away. He was already in a position. He had already taken a strategic position. He had put his defenses up. He was ready and he was mindful of Allah. If this is a prophet of God, someone of such a high status, someone that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, that he witnessed the stars and the sun and the moon prostrating to him. This is his status, yet he was mindful before he fell in such a dilemma. Then you have people on the other hand, They'll open a shop, you know, in the mall. Then they have the panorama of whoever's walking backwards and forwards. And I've seen, I've seen this um, new phenomenon. They, they, I've seen it overseas, I don't know if it's start up here, where they actually put their aragil on the side of the road. This is one of the worst things you can do. And they look at the passers-by as they come and go. And they'll sit there all day and they're just watching people come and go. They put themselves in such a position that the second the devil says, you, come. He'll get up like he's been called up to collect a million dollars. He'll run straight away and say, where do you want me to sin? Where is she? And then this is all that will happen. I feel like the joker for a second. So anyway, so if we look at this idea of taking the preventative measure and being mindful, I will not fall in the sin at this point. 
One word can make you mindful and change your life. One of the brothers, I remember, when he came to Hajj with us, I asked him, what brought you to here? Sometimes you see someone, and you could see when they tell you their life that this person just suddenly came on board and started to follow the faith. He said, one word someone said to me. I said, what did he say? He said, he, I asked one of the brothers to come with me on a fishing trip. And his question was, he said, when he looked at him, he said, do you pray? He said, do you pray? This is this very important point. He said, do you pray? He said, why is that? Why is it important if I pray when we're going on a fishing trip? He said, because we're going to be out past the heads. We're going to be out in the sea. And say God wants to punish you for not praying, I'm going to be on board when, that boat, when we both go down. So if you want to drown, drown on your own. He said, when I heard that was enough to make me realize what I was doing. Just a word. Remind someone with a single word. And you bring them back and you make them attentive. And you need to come in. You know when you come in, you notice everyone's smiling, everyone's happy. Because the remembrance of Allah, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al qulub. Or as the Imam says, بِذِكْرِنَا أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ تُعِيشُ الْقُلُوبِ The remembrance of Allah makes the heart content. The remembrance of Ahl al-Bayt is what gives life to your soul. You... This is what gives life. When you hear salawat, see how you feel? You feel... Oh, We all need this reminder because we all forget. Religion is all-encompassing. It covers every facet of your life. You're not talking about just prayers, fasting and hajj. We're talking about everything, dealing with your family, dealing with your friends, dealing with your neighbors, trade and commerce. Everything is covered by Islam. It covers your entire life. Even when we gather to have remembrance of the stance of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. This reminds us of everything. This gives you a reminder to what the stance was. That the Imam refused to give allegiance to someone because if we were to mention it today, people wouldn't honestly. I've heard this, many, many speakers have said this. I've heard this by more than one speaker. That they tell you, if you were to come up to a person living today and say Imam Hussein would not give allegiance to Yazid because he said Yazid sharib al khamr. That Yazid consumes wine. He drinks alcohol. People will say, and what's the problem with that? Yazid kills innocent lives. And you might think to yourself, yes, the world leaders... They'll say, what's the problem with that? We do that all the time. We call it collateral damage. Keep going. This is what they do. So how would you be able to convince them? The stance of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is the best reminder. And that's why we reflect over this. And that's why if you realize every time something takes place, like recently, the, the 15th night of Sha'ban, we do Ziyarat al Hussein. On Layl al-Qadr, we do Ziyarat al Hussein. In all these special nights that we have throughout the year, we remember Abu Abdullah al Hussein and his stance. Because Imam Hussein alayhi salam, in his stance, there were moments where he just gave simple reminders that brought people back. Simple reminders. And one of the reminders that we recall every year, Muharram, is when Imam Hussein alayhi salam spoke to Hur. That when he spoke to Hur, Ibn Yazid al Riyahi, Salamullah alayhi, this is one of the companions of the Imam that initially was against the Imam, stood in the way of the Imam, prevented the Imam from leaving. The Imam said a single word to him. He said, may your mother weep over you. If you say to someone, may your, yani, may your mother feel hardship because of you. May she be a, saddened and bereaved because of you. And then Hur said to the Imam, he said, you said this about my mother, I cannot say this about your mother because your mother is Fatima alayhi salam.
that your mother is a Zahra alayhi salam. It's a reminder. You know who you are here. Unlike the others that fought the Imam, they're the people that the reminder, وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى They're the ones that said, we know that you are the Hussein, who is the son of Fatima, the daughter of Rasulullah, and we will fight you. We know this. It's not like we are absent-minded of this. We know this. And this is the difference when it comes to reminder. Our first step in our direction of attaining a good life is to have a constant reminder. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make our hearts in constant reminder of Him. That everything we think about, we remember Allah Azza wa Jal. We remember Allah's position when it comes to this. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal not to take us from this world until He is pleased with us. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to hasten the reappearance of our Master Al Hujat ibn Al Hassan al Mahdi, Arwahuna Fida. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad A'udhu bi jalali wajhika al-kareem An yanqadiyya anni shahru ramadhan Aw yatlu'a al-fajru min laylati hadhi ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني عليه وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات وإلى أرواح موتانا وموتاكم ولشفاء المرضى بالأخص الحج أبو علي الحائري رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات